బిస్కట్ వేది కావట దెన్ ఫ్యామిలీ సీక్ర్ గా మిరసి మంచి పొటెటో క్రక బిస్కట్ వేది కావట దెన్ ఫ్యామిలీ సీక్ర్ గా మిరసి మంచి పొటెటో క్రక satellite on free view on cable on radio on mobile on the web and around the world this is other than a 24/7 headlines first at 9 premier's pledge prime minister assures that he will not protect any unp np accused of fraud or corruption Also making headlines tonight, Sambandhan meets Vigneswaran. Tamil National Alliance allows Northern Chief Minister Vigneswaran to exercise his powers. No faith motion, United National Party to decide Minister Ravi Karunayake's future. Call for a fresh struggle. Deputy Minister Ajit P Perera insists to immediately address lagging judicial process. Making headlines in the world of sports, the fastest man's farewell. Usain Bolt fails to claim gold in final race. With news from across the world, we we begin our broadcast first at nine. We take a look at news here at home. President Maithripala Sirisena says the water shortages in Anuradhapura, Trincomalee, and Kurunagala districts will be solved by the Moragahakanda Kaluganga project. The president made these remarks at a function in Arlagangvila in Polonnaruwa yesterday. President Maitri Pala Sirisena unveiled the pinnacle of the new stupa at the Sri Jetavana Rama Temple in Aralagangvila in Polonnaruwa. The president then presented the deed to the land of the temple to the chief incumbent Venerable Minneri Subhalankara Thera. The construction at the Moragahakanda project has been completed. After the project itself is complete, we will not need to divide the water either way. The Moragahakanda reservoir will provide water to districts including Polonnaruwa, Anuradhapura, Trincomalee and Kurunagala for both drinking and agriculture. The water problems in these areas will be completely eliminated. You will have enough water to work on paddy fields in both seasons once the Moragahakanda reservoir is completed. And Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe says that he will not protect members of the United National Party who are accused of any fraud or corruption. He expressed these views at an event in Muskelia today. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe met members of the United National Party at a UNP membership drive in Muskelia today. We will not allow corruption. I appointed an internal committee consisting of lawyers to look into the allegations over treasury bonds. Then it was handed over to the committee on public enterprises. Though we won the election, we appointed a member of the opposition as the chairman of that committee. After that, we decided to appoint a presidential commission of inquiry, which nobody was against. We are transparent in these inquiries and even the attorney general can question ministers today. Is that something which happened before? In the past, the attorney general was a henchman of the executive. This government does not want to protect thieves. We will take action accordingly if something is revealed. Our party is not consisted of thieves. and if there are any we will remove them from the party let the investigations proceed transparently if we do not do this people will not vote for us the hambantota report caused the country a loss of 46 billion rupees 
We will appoint another committee to look into that. They purchased eight A380 airliners. These planes can travel from Colombo to Chicago. The loss is 181 billion rupees. There are other cases, like the Greek bond, all of which we should investigate. For this, I expect the support of the joint opposition in the parliament. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa says that he will use his vote in Parliament in favour of the new confidence motion against Minister of Foreign Affairs Ravi Karnanayaka. The former President expressed these views and answering questions raised by media during an event in Gaul yesterday. What I said before was misinterpreted. I will not only vote against Ravi but also against this government. No one can ignore this. The ones who are trying to protect him are also responsible for this. I think a lot of parliamentarians will vote against him, including some of the UNP members. As it was mentioned in a newspaper, I don't know whether or not it is true. It was mentioned that, as per Ravi, the president has asked him not to resign. Therefore, I can't comment on that. He should be responsible and act accordingly. We don't know, but it should be held. They are scared of elections. It is clear that the people of this country are against the government, which is nothing new. There are a lot of problems in this country. Meanwhile, during an event in Tangol this morning, the former president alleged that there are links between members of the current government and former governor of the central bank, Arjuna Mahindran. Why did members of the parliament go to Singapore during the presidential election? What did they bring when they came back? It is no secret that all the transactions took place at the flat that belonged to Arjuna Mahindran. These should also be revealed. Meanwhile, Minister of Higher Education and Highways Lakshman Kiriala says that the parliamentary team of the United National Party will take a decision on Minister Ravi Karnanayaka soon. Here's what Minister Kiriala and several other politicians said about the no confidence motion tabled against Minister Ravi Karnanayaka. The parliamentary team of the UNP will make a decision over Minister Ravi Karnanayaka. We will be meeting tomorrow or the day after to discuss the matter. The leaders' meeting has also been arranged at 1 p.m. on Tuesday to discuss the no-confidence motion against him. When the bond issue arose, it was the joint opposition that led the fight. We criticized the transaction in Parliament, but we were attacked and two of our MPs were hospitalized. However, the President had to remove the then-governor of the Central Bank and appoint a new governor. The President indirectly told the former governor that he is a thief. If it was another minister, he or she would go home. We know how Minister Tilak Marapana gave up his ministerial portfolio when the opposition charged him for appearing in court, representing a suspect in a case against the government. But Minister Karuna Naika still hangs on. We don't try to clear any of our MPs if they have done something wrong. This is the only allegation that has come up against the good governance regime. It was a UNP regime that took the bold decision of appointing a COPE chairman from the opposition for the first time in its history. The COPE can question even a cabinet minister. The UNP will never try to hide or escape the issue. Today, everyone knows about the bond scam. These days, the talk of the town is the bribe which Minister Ravi Karnanayaka took for just assisting the bond scam. It is a house valued at 165 million rupees. He lived there for eight months and says he does not know how he received it. The president had to reshuffle his cabinet two months ago because of this minister. Minister Karnanayaka, who should be in prison today, is still a cabinet minister. That is not the mandate given by the people. <laughs> This was revealed only after President Maitripala Sirisena appointed this presidential commission. When it was appointed, even the joint opposition was against it. They claimed it was an attempt to hide facts. They wanted to go to court. Ministers from both the UNP and SLFP have shared their thoughts with the president already. 
If he has a little bit of shame and fear, he should resign now. Many SLFP and UPFA parliamentarians assured that they would use their vote against Minister Ravi. The JVP also said that their votes will be used against him. And so will the TNA. The majority of the MPs and the UNP who are against corruption inform the Prime Minister that they will either use their votes or abstain from voting. Moving on, Chief Minister of the Northern Province, C.V. Vigneswaran, says that the coalition party leaders of the TNA agreed that the Chief Minister of the Northern Province could exercise his powers to amend or rearrange ministerial portfolios of the Provincial Council. Vigneswaran made these remarks yesterday, speaking to media following a meeting held with opposition leader and leader of the TNA, our Sammandan and affiliated party leaders of the Tamil National Alliance. Affiliated party leaders of the TNA met with Chief Minister of the Northern Province, C.V. Vigneswaran, at his official residence in Jaffna yesterday in a consultative meeting presided over by leader of the opposition, R. Sambandan. In the meeting held with the opposition leader, we decided that the Chief Minister, by using his existing legal powers, can amend or rearrange the Board of Ministers in the Provincial Council. The other affiliated parties showed their consent to this. Secondly, changing a particular minister does not mean that they are being dismissed for corruption. It was agreed that those ministerial changes should come into effect only after taking the opinions of the constituent parties into consideration. We have taken these decisions to reduce the number of problems in the Provincial Council as far as possible since we only have one more year for the term of our office and to provide a good service to the people. And Deputy Minister of Power and Renewable Energy Ajit P. Pereira says that it is time for yet another struggle similar to the one of January 2015 against people's representatives who do not pay heed to the general public. The Deputy Minister made these comments addressing a public rally in Bandaragam today. We have a special responsibility to punish rogues as we came to power promising to do so. We have to punish all rogues, old and new. If we do this, no new rogues will emerge. The present government has failed very badly in this effort. I have been telling the Prime Minister and the President this. If anyone, especially decision makers, think that there is nothing wrong with the current procedure of dragging a court case on corruption for 10 to 15 years, that is very bad for the country's future. And the civil organization CAFE, or the Campaign for Free and Fair Elections, uh, points out that holding provincial council elections simultaneously does not require delaying them. Executive director of CAFE, Kirti Tenakon, made the remark at a media briefing today, also alleging that the government is unable to face the public. There is a simple method to follow if provincial council elections must be held on the same day. By the 2nd of October, the terms of three provincial councils will end. The other provincial councils can then dissolve without any issue after notifying the relevant governors through the chief ministers, thus creating the opportunity to hold elections on the same day. I don't think anyone would object to such a process. This government, led by the UNP, is unable to face the public in an election due to their own political actions. And the Consumer Affairs Authority stated that a Gazette notification detailing the maximum retail price of rice is issued. Accordingly, local samba rice will be sold at 90 rupees per kilogram, imported samba rice at 80 rupees and local nadu at 78 rupees per kilogram. With that news, let's take a look at other stories making news from across Sri Lanka in brief. Former Prime Minister of Turkey, Professor Ahmed Davutoglu, arrived in Kandy this morning and called on the chief prelate of the Malvata chapter, Most Venerable Tibbat Wave Sri Sumangala Tera. Speaking to media, the former Premier said Sri Lanka is an example of religious coexistence and dialogue. Sri Lanka is a good example of peace and to keep peace in this world, in this turbulent, a great success. Sri Lanka is a very important ally of Turkey and I am so happy to see that today Turkish-Sri Lankan relation is going very good. Speaking at an event in Kandy today, Chairman of the Government Nursing Officers Union, Saman Ratnapriya, says 
health services should be strictly patient oriented. Service in medicine and nursing should be developed professionally, including paramedics and junior staff. We can provide better health care to patients only through well-integrated teamwork. A head-on collision between a tipper truck and a motor vehicle on the Kurunagala Dambulla Road claimed the lives of two people while critically injuring three others. Kurunagala police have arrested the driver of the tipper truck while further investigations are underway. A fire that erupted in Ponnankanya in Badampe completely destroyed a stretch of paddy fields in the area, also affecting the flow of traffic on the Kakkapalya Madagama Road. The Putlam Disaster Management Centre stated that the cause of the fire is unknown, adding that investigations are underway. Coming up on First at Nine Indonesia and Russia ink deal on trade. Coming up next. Minister of Health, Nutrition and Indigenous Medicine, Dr. Raj Dasenaratna says that 85% of the country's pharmaceutical demand will be manufactured within Sri Lanka by the end of next year. He expressed these views at the opening ceremony of a new branch of the State Pharmaceuticals Corporation in Anuradhapura today. <laughs> The State Pharmaceuticals Corporation of Sri Lanka creates a profit of 2 billion rupees. All the state institutions under my authority are making profits. The Jawadnapur Hospital is making a profit of more than 1 billion rupees and they say that they do not need money from the Treasury. State Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Corporation has initiated their second stage. We will manufacture 85% of medicine within this country by the end of next year. The Sri Lanka Ayurvedic Drugs Corporation has also made profits. We will carry these programs on successfully. Meanwhile, Minister Rajita Senaratna opened the Ayurvedic Research Hospital for Prevention of Kidney Diseases in Madhavachya this evening. The government spent 85 million rupees to build the new hospital, whose complex consists of new facilities, including an outpatient department and an inpatient department. Indonesia and Russia signed a preliminary deal on trading Sukhoi Su-35 fighter jets for commodities like palm oil, tea and coffee. The Indonesian Trade Ministry confirmed that a memorandum of understanding was signed in Moscow to exchange 11 Su-35 fighters for a number of Indonesian exports. Indonesia had a $411 million trade surplus with Russia last year, while Russia remains subject to a trade embargo with the United States and the European Union. Still in international business news, former Governor of the Bank of England, Mervyn King, said yesterday that Britain needs to make it clear to the European Union that it is prepared to carry on a loan if talks to reach a satisfactory deal fails. King, who in December said that Britain should leave the EU's single market and possibly its customs union, added that his country needed to show that it had a clear plan on how to manage without a European Union trade deal. Britain is due to leave the EU in March 2019 and began formal exit talks in June. On to the Colombo equities now. Last week, or uh, the week trading week that uh, just concluded, the All Share Price Index lost 1.48 and the S&P SL20 Index lost 1%, with the diversified sector becoming the highest contributor to turnover. For a detailed picture how markets will perform in the new week, we'll take a look at the forecast with Demand the Matthew from First Capital Holdings. We expect uh, market activity to remain uh, dull with the low level of uh, retail and high net worth uh, institutional participation. Most local investors are likely to be on a wait and see approach with the negative earnings being released uh, due to the recent floods and the slow economic conditions. We expect foreign participation to improve especially on the buying side on blue chip counters. However, overall turnover levels and local investor participation is continue to be low. Coming up on First at Nine. India win Test Series 2-0. Coming up next. In 
playing cricket, India won their second successive series in Sri Lanka today as they wrapped up the second test by an innings and 53 runs, bowling Sri Lanka out for a second innings of 386. Dimut Karnaratna built on his overnight 92 to score 141, but man of the match Ravindra Jadeja broke through regularly to ensure that the visitors did not have to bat again. Beginning the day at 209 for two, Sri Lanka continued to resist the Indian bowling in a valiant effort to save the game, with night watchman Malinda Pushpakumara holding firm as Dimut Karnaratna reached his 100. Pushpakumara and Dinesh Chandimal departed in quick succession before India started to pile on the pressure in the post-launch session. Ravindra Jadeja took three wickets in three overs, the first of them Dimut Karnaratna for 141 and then Angelo Matthews for 36 on his way to a five-wicket haul. While Niroshan Dikwala also made it into the 30s, India's victory was only a matter of time, the host eventually falling to 386 all out and handing India a 2-0 series win. Straight up in the air. While winning became a habit for champion sprinter Usain Bolt, last night marked the end of an era. Justin Gatlin ruined Bolt's farewell party in London when he won the 100-meter gold at the World Athletics Championships. Former world and Olympic champion Gatlin won by just 0.02 seconds over Christian Coleman, while Usain Bolt was 100th of a second further back in third place. Despite struggling for form and fitness in his final season, Usain Bolt had been favourite to secure his 20th global gold, but began the race poorly with the slowest reaction time in the field. Justin Gatlin has struck an unpopular note due to his doping past, having twice been banned, but was able to overtake Christian Coleman and time his dip impeccably to take the win by two hundredths of a second with a time of 9.92 seconds. Twenty-year-old Alexander Zverev advanced to the final of the City Open in Washington, D.C. with a straight sets victory over second seed Kei Nishikori last night. In the other semi-finals, South Africa's Kevin Anderson continued his comeback from injury with a win against Jack Sock. World number 8 Alex Zverev is in the hunt for a fourth title of the year with a surprisingly quick win over ninth-ranked Kei Nishikori, 6-3, 6-4. Zverev won 94% of his first serve points and broke the second seed as early as the second game in a complete performance. The 20-year-old will play Kevin Anderson in the final tonight after the South African beat Jack Sock in straight sets 6-3, 6-4. The United Nations Security Council unanimously imposed new sanctions on North Korea yesterday that could slash its $3 billion annual export revenue by a third. The U.S. drafted resolution in response to two intercontinental ballistic missile tests last month bans North Korean exports of coal, iron, iron ore, lead, lead ore and seafood. The new sanctions imposed on North Korea also prohibit countries from increasing the current numbers of North Korean laborers working abroad, bans joint new ventures with North Korea, and any new investment in current joint ventures. Today, China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi told his North Korean counterpart Ri Yong-ho at a meeting in the Philippines that Pyongyang should stop carrying out nuclear and missile tests and that it should abide by UN resolutions. U.S. envoy to the U.N. Nikki Haley earlier said North Korea was facing the most stringent set of sanctions on any country in a generation. Still in news overseas, Zimbabwe's main opposition leader Morgan Swangirai yesterday reunited with former allies in Harare to agree a pre-election pact to challenge incumbent President Robert Mugabe. 93-year-old Mugabe has ruled the former British colony since its independence in 1980. Morgan Swangirai's movement for democratic change has been the main threat to Robert Mugabe's four-decade stronghold on power since its formation in 1999, but has been weakened by splits in 2005 and 2014, mainly over strategy. 
Yesterday, Welshman and Gube, who led a breakaway MDC faction in 2004, and Tendai Beatty, who left the main opposition in 2014, signed a pact that would see them fielding parliamentary candidates in some constituencies under the MDC Alliance banner and would support Svangirai's fourth bid for the presidency. And before we wrap up tonight's edition of the news, it's time to take a look at what the weather will be for the next 24 hours. Showers may occur in the western Sabragamus, central and north central northwestern provinces and in the Gaul and Mathura districts too. Heavy rainfall is expected of above 75 millimeters in some parts of the Ratnapura, Kegal, Kandy, Noralia, Gaul and Kaluthara districts. Let's take a look at how the city by city weather forecast will be in the next 24 hours. That's it from your news first at nine. And before we go, we'd like to take you to Kataragama to show you how the ceremonial Tasca Vasana is prepared for the annual Perahara of the Ruhunu Kataragama Mahadevalaya. As per tradition, the Tasca is groomed and blessed in various religious rituals before stepping out for the procession in all its glory. We we'll leave you with these visuals. Have a pleasant evening. Stay safe. Good night. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Varana 24-7.